Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 35 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the multi-view control in ASP.NET. As the name suggests, a multi-view control is made up of multiple view controls, and each view control in turn can have controls inside it. To understand this practically, let's create a simple example where we want to capture employee information on a step-by-step -step basis. For example, first I want to capture employee personal details. Next, I want to capture his contact details. Show summary for confirmation upon employee's confirmation. Save the data to a database table. So the first step, you know, ask the employee to enter his first name, last name, gender, and then I click on step two. It then takes me to contact details page where we ask for his email address, mobile number. On step three, we show the summary of whatever he has entered. And then if he is happy, he will submit. Otherwise, he can go back and modify uh, the details that he want to change. And when he submits, we want to save the data to a database table. Now, to achieve this, there are several techniques in ASP.NET. And one of the easiest ways to achieve this is to use a multi-view control. We can also achieve this using wizard control, which we will talk about in the next video session. And another way to achieve this is to create multiple web forms and then use state different state management techniques like query strings, sessions, cookies, etc. Okay, we'll talk about each of these in a later video session. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop the multi-view control. So multi-view, and we know that the multi-view control is actually made up of multiple view controls. So within the multi view, I can drag and drop the view control. So if you look at what we want to do, we want to have three views. So I'm going to have three view controls within that. So let's copy and paste this three times here. And let's give this meaningful name. Let's call this view personal details. Let's call this view contact details and maybe the final one, view summary. Okay, now within each view control, if you look at this screenshot, you know, I want to have first name, last name, gender, and a drop down list text box, text box, and a button control. Just to save some time in typing, I have this HTML already created. Okay, this is a simple HTML. Let me copy and paste that within the first view control. Okay, and if you look at this HTML, it's pretty straightforward. All we have is a table, and then within that we have a TR, and then TD, and there is a heading step one personal details. So if I flip this to design mode, so this is what we have here, personal details, first name, text, um, text box, text box, and a drop down list, and a button control. And the text on the button control is step two with two greater than symbols. And then once we double click that, there is an event handler, go to step two. Okay, so that's about the first you know, screen design, the personal details screen design. The next thing that we want to do is design the screen for contact details. So this is going to be our step two. So this is going to be present in our view two. So let's minimize this so that it's cleaner. Okay, so I have this view now. This is our second step where we want to uh, capture the contact details of the user. Again, I have the HTML typed here. It's just a simple table where we are capturing the employee's email address and mobile number that you can see here. Okay, so let's copy and paste that HTML there. Okay. So if you look at this now, we have the second screen. And we have two buttons here, one button to go back to the previous step and the other button to go back to the next step. And if you look at the way we have designed this HTML table, it's very simple to understand. The buttons, okay, we have two TDs, one TD to go back, that's the text there, and the other TD and the other button to go to step three. And the other HTML that we have is for the email address and mobile number. If you look at each row here, we have two TDs within each row. But then if you look at the first row, we have only one TD and we have used a call span attribute. Basically what we are telling with this call span attribute is that in this, I mean, if you look at all the TRs for any table here, there are two TDs. But then this personal details 
and this step to contact details, whatever is displaying this heading, we are merging one TD into two TDs. So one TD should occupy the entire space of two TDs. So that's why we are using this call span. Span the column to two TDs. That's what your number two is saying here. So the width of this one TD is now going to occupy the space of two TDs. Okay, that's why we are using call span is equal to two here, and the same on the first view, call span is equal to two. But the idea is very simple. We have created a view to capture personal details, another view to capture contact details. Finally, we want to create a view to capture the summary that we can see. And if you look at this, all we want is, um, you know, and heading here showing step three summary, personal details, contact details, and then you know the text here and the respective label controls which can display that data there. Okay, again, we need to have that HTML. So just to save some time in typing, I have this pre type This is a big table here. So let's copy and paste that. By the way, I'll have this on my blog so um, you can actually download or copy it from there. So let me paste that there. Okay, so now if you look at the design, we have everything that's required. So it's a simple view control, a multi-view control that has three views inside that. And within each view, we have our respective HTML, okay, that we want to show. All right, so at this point, so if I double click this button, I want to go to that step. Similarly, if I want to, if I double click this, let's generate all the event handlers. If I double click this, I want to go to previous step. And if I double click this, I want to go to step two. And if I double click this, I want to submit. So we have all the event handlers generated. We'll write the code in just a bit. But now, all we have done until now is we have designed our form. But let's run this page and see what's going to happen. Okay, so when I run this page, it's not going to show anything on the web page. It will basically be empty because multi view control by default will not show anything on the web form. You will have to tell the multi view control, okay, when I load, when I get loaded, what view you want to see. And how do I tell that? The multi view control has got this active view index property. And you specify that, you know to tell the multi-view control which view to show. And this is zero index based. So if you look at this multi-view control, it has got three views within that. So if we go to the source, we can actually minimize this. Okay, that's view one, that's view two, and that's view three, basically three views. So when this view control gets loaded, which view we want to show first? Our idea is basically to show, you know, the personal details. So when the page first loads, so view code on the page load, if it is not a post back event, what do I want to do? In the multi view control, the active view index, look at that, that's an integer property. The active view index is going to be zero, which means the first index because it's based on a zero based index. So when I run this now, first the, you know, the personal details um, view will be shown. So I can enter my personal details here. And when I click step two, what should happen? It go, it should go to the next view within that multi-view control, okay? So all you have to do is, when I go to the design, flip to the design mode, when I click step two, I want to go to the next view, okay? And how do I tell that? So multi-view one dot active index is equal to, that's the second step, okay? But on the other hand, when I click, you know, now I come on to step two, but when I click the step one button, I want to go to first step, which means the active index is zero. So let's copy that. Which button is that? That's that one. And then on this, when I click step three, I want to go to the final view, okay? And then when I click on step two, I want to go to the first view. So copy that. So which is that one? Double click this. That is that. And finally, when I click this, we want to save the data to the database. We are not going to do that here because that's simple ADO.NET code and we know how to do it. Um, so instead of that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another page 
uh, on this web application project. So let's right click that, add new item, select a web form. Let's call this maybe confirmation dot ASPX. So all we want to do is we want to navigate to this page. So confirmation dot ASPX and maybe here we'll have an H1 and we will say data saved to the database. Okay, so finally after we are done we will just redirect the user to that page. So response dot redirect tilde forward slash and the page that we want to go to is confirmation.aspx. So let's get to that page there. Okay, so all the code is done. But then, if you remember, on the summary page, you know, when I am about to go to step three, you know, that's the confirmation page. So on the confirmation page, I also want to show the details like, you know, we want to show the details in the respective label controls. Okay, so those label controls are LBL first name dot text is equal to where does that come from? TXT. Look at that. This text box and labels they are present on the same page. So you can actually directly retrieve them. They're not present on a different page. They're present on the same page but within a multi-view control. Okay, so that is the advantage of using, you know, this multi-view control. For the end user, you know, he thinks that they are different pages, but it's actually one page. You know, rather than asking all this information on a single page at one time, if you ask the user, you know, in small bits and pieces, that makes more sense. Okay, so from a user perspective, it's like multiple pages, but, you know, from the application perspective, in fact, look at the URL here. It's all webform1.aspx, webform1.aspx, webform1.aspx. Okay, but it gives an illusion that it's happening across three different pages. Because, because of the fact that all these controls are present on the same page, you know, I can directly access the label controls and uh, the text box controls that are present in different views within that page. Okay, so text, similarly LBL, last name dot text, that will come from txt last name dot text and similarly we want LBL gender dot text is equal to txt gender or DDL gender dot selected value and we want LBL email dot text that comes from text box email dot text and finally we want LBL mobile which comes from TXT mobile okay so we have all that there so now let's go ahead and run this let's close the page here so it should work as expected now so we are on web form 1 notice the URL here and I'm filling in the details first name is Mike last name is Hancock, male, and when I click step to look at this, you know, the view is changed, but look at the URL. I'm still on web form one, and look at this, when I click the back button, it's treating it like a whole different page. Okay, so it's maintaining the history there. All right, email address, let's say mike at mike.com, and mobile number, maybe 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and when I click step 3, it goes to the confirmation page. And look at that. Step 3 summary, it's showing the details that we want. And finally, when I say submit, you know, on that click event, we can actually write the ADO.NET code to save the data to the database. We have spoken, we have, we have discussed about ADO.NET in a complete uh, video series. Please check that if you're new to ADO.NET. Okay, look at this. I can actually go back, go back to any step I want. Or I can use these steps. Okay, so from the end user perspective, it is giving an illusion that it's happening across different pages, but we know that it's on the same page. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.